my dad is a professor of health economics at Northwestern. Um, we were arguing about, I think I can't remember what, I told him that wages in the U.S. were much lower than most industrialized countries. And he said that it wasn't his fault that people decided to blow their paycheck on a big screen TV. Uh, I think uh, that statement, in my mind, sums up how most elites feel about the poor. It's your fault you're poor. Do you, do you agree with Let's that? Let's take a look at the post-war period. Uh, it's basically economic history of the post-war period. It breaks up roughly into two phases. And the first phase was from the end of the war up till the early 70s. That's what many economists call the golden age of capitalism, you know, state capitalism, they should say. It was a period in which uh, there was unprecedented growth uh, and very egalitarian growth. So wages rose. In fact, the, you know, the lowest percentiles of the population did about as well as the upper ones. Uh, there were some level of social benefits were introduced, the partial welfare state, uh, quality of life improved, the social indicators improved. All of that went on until about the mid-70s. Since then, the situation has been quite different. I mean, there was growth, though less than before, uh, uh, but it didn't go, but wa wages did not go up. They stopped. Real wages stagnated pretty much for the majority of the population. Working hours went way up. Uh, you had to have two members of a family uh, working just to keep food on the table, uh, for getting the flat screen television just for necessities. Uh, uh, and that means that families are negatively affected unless there's support systems, which are very weak in the United States comparatively, you know, daycare and so on and so forth. Uh, so it harmed families. Uh, Benefits decline, uh, declined, and uh, uh, quality of life indicators declined. In fact, uh, the standard statistical indicators, social indicators, uh, rose. They sort of tracked wages during the first period. But starting in 1975, uh, wages roughly stagnated, real wages, and social indicators began to decline. Uh, I mean, is that the fault of working people? Hardly. I mean, that's clearly the result of uh, uh, institutional changes and uh, uh, decisions about the structure of the economy, and we know what they were. I mean, that's when financialization of the economy began, uh, uh, you know, uh, manic ideas about uh, efficient markets took over, uh, uh, regulation started being uh, eliminated, uh, uh, claims about reduction of government. Uh, began to be popular. I mean, it didn't happen. Like, government grew under Reagan, but the claims uh, and, uh, and the attacks on, you know, the start of dismantling welfare state uh, measures uh, uh, went on. Uh, uh, Americans now work many more hours than uh, the Europeans, uh, and uh, for, for, you know, at best, I mean, not even comparable wages, you know. But is that the are these changes the fault of the poor? I mean, you know, it's pretty irrational. We know that major changes were made in the structure of the institutions, and that led to dramatic outcomes. So it's irrational to say that's the fault of the individuals, the same individuals who were there in the golden age.